Welcome to Hawks TV. We're here at halftime against Adelaide. It's 41-31. Is that right, 41-31? <laughs> yeah. And we've got a special guest tonight, former NBA player, writer, author, uh, seasoned traveler, Paul, Sh Paul Shirley. How are you going? I'm, I'm all right. I'm actually, I'm just learning that you guys say how, how are you going instead of how are you doing, right? Like that's in Australia. How are you going? So uh, this, is my, this is my first time in Australia. I've only been here for three days and so I'm having to learn on the fly. Was that at the airport? How are you going? Yeah, uh, yeah. That's, that was, that was a fast one. That was quick off the plane. Uh, are you using that now? You using that with I people? I haven't um, instituted it into my own vernacular, but I'm going to try to take that home with me. You definitely get some looks back home. Like, yeah. I use that in the States all the time. Okay. Anyway, uh, what brings you to Wollongong? Um, I'm going down to uh, to Mel Melbourne, Melbourne, right? not Melbourne, <laughs> but Melbourne, to see uh, Chris Anstey, who people will know as a relatively well-known, never heard of him, yeah, <laughs> Australian uh, basketball player. He and I played together in um, Russia, yep. and have become really good friends over the years. So I'm going to go see him. I came to see a friend of mine here, uh, who's house sitting in Wambara. Wow, of all places, up on the um, up in the escarpment. It's right, nice right. We nice were. Uh, I think I'm, I might try to learn how to surf tomorrow. We'll see how that goes. So I'm. Just sort of traveling, like this. It's it's nice to not have the responsibility of going to practice every day and go see the world. Well, but just on a side note, with surfing, you should get in contact with this guy because he's a bit of a guru with uh, filming stuff in water. We, we we went today. Uh, we have he, a, could, he could film my bloopers. That's like, it. That's that it. Be good. We have a phrase down here in Wollongong which LeBron James helped us coin, and it's we take our talents down to South Beach. And yeah, you know, I was going to ask. We have a beautiful beach just out here. So that's, that's right. So, so this is the kind of things you're looking forward to doing. Right. Maybe I could I could possibly take my surfing talents to South Beach tomorrow. We'll see. Uh, what are some of the other things you're looking forward to doing in Australia while you're here? Uh, well, kind of like I said, it's it's uh, people may not understand this but it's so strange to be in basketball season and not have to go to practice so it's nice to just wake up and kind of do whatever the hell I want I'm appreciating that more than anything um, I don't really yeah I've, I've learned over the years about traveling that you don't go to the sites you just see the people meet the people and that gives you a much better impression of a place so I've enjoyed just I stayed at a hostel in Sydney two nights ago like it's been fun to just sort of embrace Australia and figure out what the people are like more than anything else now you mentioned Chris Anstey you have a few connections to the NBA, I think. I don't know if you saw the game last night. Uh, guy Ira, Ira Clark played for Gold Coast. Did he really? I think you played with him in Russia, is that right? With Chris Anstey, in fact. Okay. We were all on the same team, yeah. I didn't know that. I was actually hoping I would recognize somebody here tonight, but so far, nobody. Uh, Dave Gruber from the Hawks is from Iowa. I don't know if that, he went to college at Northern Iowa, I think. Okay. No, Northern Iowa. Um, and the other, imp Oh, he's in Australia now, the redhead guy from Adelaide, from Indiana, Adam Ballinger, played for Michigan State. Yeah, he was yeah, on the yeah. actually on the championship winning Michigan State team yeah, 2000. When you, when, you, when you squeeze in white guys, they just, <laughs> yeah. white Americans look a lot like Australians, and I just sort of assume all Australian. Uh, another, I think a college uh, teammate of yours, Tony Rampton, yes. played for the Hawks. Did he really? Yep. Now, it was he, he finished his career like with the New Zealand team. Wasn't the, the New Zealand team was in the Australian League for a while, yep. maybe? Okay. They still are. Yep. Yeah. yeah, but Tony Rampton, um, the, the great story with Tony Rampton is this. When I went back to Iowa State after Tim Floyd, who went on to coach the Bulls, had left, Larry Eustachie was the next coach. Larry Eustachie told Tony Rampton to go back to New Zealand because he didn't want him on the team anymore. And after that, a year later, I think in, this would have been 2000, Tim Floyd called Eustachie and said, Hey, uh, Larry, I want you to know you're the only person in Iowa State history to send home a, an, an Olympiad because Rampton played for New Zealand in the 2000 Olympics. And Larry Eustachie sent him home said, you don't need to play here anymore. Are you going to go to New Zealand? I'm not going to make that trip, sadly. So you, been, I went to China, which is pretty good. But So is, is Tony Rampton your only exposure to the Kiwi accent? It is. He was, uh, I think he was my host on my uh, visit to Iowa State, and he was fresh off the boat at that point. So I was, <laughs> spent the whole time, uh, I, I don't know what you're saying at all. What did Chris Anstey tell you about the NBL? Um, if, if anything. 
If anything, well, let's wait for that horn, which will give me some time to think. Um, he said, I, I think he was, the reason he came home after, he was making a lot of money in Russia and all of these places, and he really enjoyed being close to friends and family again. And, and I don't know, like, how much they're paying guys now, but it seemed like at the time he could make enough that it offset like having to live in the cold barrens of Kazan, Russia. When you were playing, oh, you were, you're retired now? Sure. Any chance of a comeback? Any interest in the NBL? I, I, I was telling my friends up there that my dream was always to finish my career in either Sweden, where I would meet a beautiful girl <laughs> who I would marry, or in Australia, where maybe I would meet a beautiful girl too, but I thought it would be cool to play here. Those days may have passed, I don't know, but it would be amazing to get the opportunity, I'm sure. So this could be, you know, kind of a scouting mission for right, you? Right, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I have the uh, guns to keep up with these guys anymore, <laughs> but I'm only, I, at 33, I'm pretty ancient for uh, well, basketball, I suppose. Maybe we'll talk to Millie after the game and right. we'll look towards See next season. Out. A little under the table deal. Uh, i got one more question, which is probably my most important question. Okay. You're a former Chicago Bulls center, so you're well qualified to answer this question. Okay, okay. Who, there's been many great Australian Chicago Bulls centers. That's true. Luke Longley. Right. Chris Anstey. Yes, I've, yeah. Do you know who the other one is? Uh, it's, that's alright, I'll, I'll give it to you. You okay. probably don't know. Luke Shenso. Oh, right. So, that's the three. Who's your favorite? Well, oh, Chris Anstey, of course, <laughs> because he kept me he kept me sane in Russia. Probably kept me from committing suicide in Russia. So, without question, Chris Anstey, always my favorite Australian player of all time, center or no. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> we'll stop talking about uh, suicides in Russia and yes. wrap yes. wrap it up. Thanks for your time, Paul. No, thanks.